All right, so what do you do when um, your speedometer doesn't read the correct speed? Let's say, for instance, that you're going uh, 45, but your speedometer is only telling you that you're going 40. That's a pretty easy way to get yourself into uh, a ticket. So we're going to find out why the speedometer doesn't read correctly. And it's pretty simple. A little bit to do with geometry. This right here. This is an oversized tire. This tire is bigger than the tire that came on the vehicle out of the factory. So it has a bigger size. This is uh, basically a 29 inch tire. It's a, uh, the hell is this, a 235-75 R15. Yeah, I know it's metric, but it's basically a 29 inch tire. Um, so, since I went a bigger tire, you're going to have to change what's called a speedometer gear. And they look something like this. I have the older model with a cable-driven um, speedometer, so uh, I have a long shaft. If you have the newer version, it's a short shaft. Same exact gear, shorter shaft. And a uh, new O-ring. Now, to figure out what kind of gear you need, you have to do a little bit of math. You take the height of your tire, so mine is a 29-inch tire when converted into uh, American, and then um, you take the gear ratio of your differential. You can do that a whole bunch of different ways, and if you look online, there's forum posts and all kinds of stuff on how to find that. Uh, the easiest way that I found, if you don't know it and you can't find it, um, it's pretty simple. I jacked up the right tire, so the right tire was off the ground and the left tire was on the ground. And uh, what you do, you put a mark on the drive shaft and you turn whatever tire is off the ground, you shift to neutral, and then you turn the, the tire two full rotations and you count how many times your drive shaft spins. So for mine, it spun three and a half times. So that means that I have a 3.55 gear ratio. So with some kind of fancy calculation, you can take your gear ratio and your tire size and figure out what speedometer gear um, you will need so that you have a correct reading. And uh, the speedometer gear changes by the number of teeth that it has. So the more teeth, the bigger the gear is going to be. Mine right here, uh, for my calculations, I needed a 34 tooth um, long shaft gear. So it's pretty simple to install. It doesn't really take any time or effort or anything. So if you crawl underneath the vehicle, transfer case. Here we have the, uh, the tail end. This is the final output. So whatever the engine and transmission do together, this is the final speed. And uh, that's where your speed sensor comes from. So since I've cable driven, you can see the speedometer cable going through here and into the back right there. So pretty easy. Um, I don't even know if you have to take that off. You might not have to take this off. You take this bracket off and you pull the thing out and then the gear will be inside there. So uh, I'm going to try and unbolt that little uh, C looking bracket. See if we can get a gear. Okay. This bracket comes off, and then with the slightest tug, you can just shake her free. You can get around these fucking vacuum lines. There she goes. Alright. Oof. Oh, look at that. She just flew right out. I didn't even have to pull her out. <laughs> so, uh... That's the O-ring right there that should get replaced, or at least uh, relubricated, and uh, that's everything right there. So that's what your speedometer cable hooks to, it's this little setup. Alright, so here's my old gear, and that was a 35. So my numbers weren't off by much. I'm going from a 35 tooth to a 34 tooth. So, they're about the same. Mm, 34. Yep, that's 35. Okay. So, um, I guess I'm going to see if I can slip this O-ring off and uh, reassemble it.
Okay, there we are, new O-ring on place. Um, I'm gonna take some of the ATF fluid and uh, wipe it on there so it's got a nice smooth contact uh, for the gear. Um, push it in and keep spinning it and like popping it in and out until you finally feel it click in. You'll know when it clicks in, like right now it's it's in there. You just you, you spin it and then squeeze it to try and make sure that it lines up with the, uh, the cable inside. Because if it doesn't line up, you're not gonna get a read. All right, so final step beside bleeding the O-ring. Uh, on the outside of this case, you'll notice that there's numbers, and those numbers correlate with the gear that you have on there. Um, when this thing goes in, it'll sit at like an angle or something, and uh, that angle will allow the bigger and smaller gears to contact that, uh, that other gear in there. So you just look at the back, and you look for the number range that you have. So since I'm going from a 35 to a 34, I'm still going to be in the 32 to 38 range. So when you line it up, make sure that the bracket is on that little notch right there, and you're good to go. So, lube, install, and we're good. All right, there we are. That's the final setup right there. 32 to 38. And that's it. Pretty simple. Okay, um, real quick, if you're having issues, like uh, for instance you put everything back together and you notice your speedometer isn't working at all now, um, something to check. The way that this thing works, um, it's off-centered, the, the gear uh, compared to the housing. So when you rotate the housing, it'll shift the gear either like closer or farther away from the, uh, the, the drive gear in the back or whatever. Um, and I have it adjusted properly, and I was even like, I even loosened it up, and uh, I jacked the wheels up, put uh, bricks in the front so that it doesn't roll forward, I put it in a drive just to let it roll, like to, to let the tires spin, and then I, I slowly like turned this back and forth, and you could feel the, the gear start to finally catch and spin, but I didn't feel it in the cable. And uh, I unhooked the cable, or I took the housing off and twisted the gear, and um, looked at the speedometer, and the speedometer didn't move. But if you just take this peg, uh, I pulled the peg out all the way, and I just spun it like this. You can see the speedometer uh, move a lot by spinning that. So uh, you just want to make sure that that peg uh, gets seated into the gear all the way. Otherwise, it won't work. So hopefully, if you're having any issues, that helps you out. I'm going to see if that helps my issue by pulling this thing out and making sure it locks into that uh, gear. All right, there we go. That fixed my issue. If I let off the brake, she climbs. Look at that. Beautiful. So yeah, if you're having issues, make sure that your uh, your cable's properly meshing with the gear. Pull it out, spin it, make sure it's free. Pop it in like that. Sick dino, bro. If you notice, the other side isn't spinning at all. I thought that was interesting. Okay, so we're done here. Hooray. Maybe now I'll even take it for a little test drive and see what happens. Yeah, let's get it back to safe. All right, so I just ran it next to a uh, GPS and uh, she's pretty damn accurate now. Still a little bit of cable bounce but uh, not nearly as bad as it was before. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. Probably gonna get a new, uh, new speedometer cable. Uh, definitely gonna try and get a attack or get a cluster with attack. That'd be cool too. But uh, for the most part, I'm happy. All right, folks, good luck.